Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Nerdy Movie News Roundup. This is the show where we round up all of the latest news in the world of nerdy movies. I just finished eating an entire tub of ice cream. Not an entire tub, like half of a tub of ice cream. Why I did that, I don't know. It's not good for my health, but it felt good while I was doing it. So that's where I'm at in my life. <laughs> what did you eat for today for sustenance? Um, Yeah, we got a bunch of the, the stories to talk about, I guess. Let's get into it. First up, we had a final trailer for Deadpool and Wolverine. Uh, kind of didn't want to watch this one because it was like, uh, I mean, I've, I've, I'm already going to watch the movie. They're just going to spoil all the cameos and then I can't soy face while I, uh, while I do the things. Um, so I watched it anyways because of content. <laughs> I did a reaction video for it. So you can go check that out if you want. And, uh, this is probably the best trailer so far. So to be honest with you, I... I'm in a position where I'm a little over, you know, Ryan Reynolds' humor, even though I acknowledge that it is basically just Deadpool. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it fits for this specific movie, but I can't deny that. Um, and I also never necessarily loved, like, the Fox X-Men stuff. So, you know, I, I just explained how the, just the mere, the mere team-up of Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool with Hugh Jackman and Wolverine. It's not necessarily enough to make me go like, oh my god, I can't believe they're doing this, I'm so excited, Blah. like it is for a lot of other people. So I do need more of a hook, I need more of a, more of like an actually good movie, <laughs> you know? It's not like No Way Home where they, 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 they just dangled keys in front of me and I was like, I was just eating it, all, eating it all up. Just because I do have that genuine nostalgia for like Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man. Um, and, but this trailer was that for me. I, I think they did a really good job of delivering the emotional hook of the story, um, showing, you know, showing that Deadpool does care on the inside behind all the jokes, you know, them showing that this version of Wolverine, um, you know, his, all, all the trauma that he has, I assume, have, cause I, it, it, they, they definitely indicate that all the X-Men have died. <laughs> um, and like all the guilt that he feels and the lost, like, uh, the the mischances and all of that, and they, they they just did a really good job with this trailer. Obviously, you get some neat little hints. You see like a lady Deadpool, and she's like coming through a Doctor Strange portal, and it seems like there are going to be a whole bunch of other Deadpool variants behind her. So I, it almost seems like there's going to be an, an an Avengers Endgame portal moment, but with you know Fox X Men characters probably and a bunch of other Deadpool variants. We see um uh, what's her name. X twenty three. I forget. I'm forgetting the actress's name, but we we see her. We see her pop up. The 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 actress that played her in Logan. So it's interesting. They definitely confirm in this that the the Hugh Jackman Wolverine that we're seeing in this movie is not the one from the Fox X Men universe. I wonder if this Daphne Keen. That's her name. Oh, that's the actress's name. I wonder if this X twenty three either is the same one from the Fox X-Men universe, or if this is just another X-23 variant. Uh, I'm not sure, but she does pop up in this trailer, so hopefully she's in it a good amount. The way that she pops up, though, I feel like it could also be like a like a flashback. I don't know, something about it kind of felt that way. <laughs> so we'll see. But, uh, but I don't know, hopefully she's in it a lot. Um, some may say that she should probably continue forward <laughs> into the MCU. <laughs> um, all right. But yeah, the the... The trailer is good. So let's get into the next uh, story. Kumail Nanjiani may be playing Booster Gold. Now, I just want to be clear about something here. This is a rumor that is coming from not necessarily like one of the major trades. You know, it's not coming from the Hollywood Reporter or Deadline. And I used to not want to like cover stories like these that don't come from major trades in terms of the sourcing. But I kind of decided, eh, fuck it. I'll just like give that <laughs> I'll just give that uh that warning there and then just talk about it anyway cuz content. <laughs> so it's going from a website called Nexus Point News. Again, it's not one of the major trades. They say, "We have exclusively learned that Kumail Nanjiani has landed the role of Booster Gold in the DC Universe. Nanjiani is currently set to portray the character in the upcoming DC Studios series Booster Gold, one of the upcoming entries of the highly anticipated DCU." So I gotta say, 
Is this true or not? Who the hell knows? I feel like it would be pretty good casting. You know, I'm not I'm not really all that familiar with Booster Gold, but Camille Nanjiani seems like he would be really good at playing that sort of a that guy that like really wants to be a superhero but isn't <laughs> like competent or anything like that. Um, but because because from what I understand the the gist of that character is that he's a loser from the future that travels back in time and like armed with like future technology to be a superhero in like our present times. Um, and you know, he's kind of like, he's like a loser with like imposter syndrome and whatever. That's how James Gunn described it when, when he, when he announced the show. And I feel like Camille Nanjiani would be a really good pick for that. Um, and I'd like to see him in another superhero thing. Cause fucking who the hell knows if the Eternals <laughs> are ever going to be seen again. <laughs> like he went through, he went through like the fucking Chris Hemsworth trading regime for nothing. Seemingly. <laughs> So I don't know. I wouldn't mind seeing him in another superhero role. And yeah, I think he'd be good in this. All right, next up. Seems like they changed Sabra's character. So this is an interesting one. Let's get into it. It's coming from CBR. In September 2022, Shira Haas was cast as Ruth Bat Seraph uh, slash Sabra, an Israeli mutant who, in the comics, is an agent of the real-life intelligence agency Mossad. Due to the ongoing Israeli-Palestinian conflict, Marvel Studios received backlash for the character's inclusion in Brave New World, with many fans and Palestinians concerned that the MCU would potentially glorify Israel through the use of Sabra. However, it looks like Marvel will be heavily downplaying Sabra's Israeli roots in the upcoming superhero movie, with Marvel.com revealing that Ruth Bat Seraph never worked for Mossad in the MCU. Instead, she is a former Black Widow who now works as a high-ranking U.S. government official who has the trust of President Ross. So, this is one of those things that I feel kind of conflicted about. Like, I understand that, you know, it's, like, controversial right now with the whole Palestine, Palestine and Israel conflict, but, like, let's be real. First of all, most people don't care about the conflict. I mean, yeah, I... I, I'm just being for real, for real, no cap. Okay. I feel like most people don't care about this conflict. Yes. Um, are there a bunch of people that or are there like some people on Twitter that have, you know, really looked into it and have like super strong opinions? Sure. But the vast majority of people are people who have full-time jobs, <laughs> families to take care of, and they haven't, like, put in a ton of time into researching, like, one of the most complicated conflicts in the history of the world. So, I, like, this feels a little weird to me. Because, on the one hand, I understand that you want to avoid controversy. But you're basically, like, erasing someone's Jewishness, like, the character's Jewishness. And that is kind of weird like that's kind of uh i feel like that's kind of problematic that we can't have like an israeli we can't have an israeli superhero really <laughs> like captain america the ex like when they made captain america you oh what you're saying that like america hasn't done fucked up shit really like when they made Captain America, was Captain America, like, uh, celebrating fucking, you know, whatever immoral, depending on who you ask, like, military actions that the United States have done? I, like, the other thing is that, like, the United States sends aid to Israel. So, like, what? Is the existence of, like, Sam Wilson's Captain America celebrating whatever they're doing? Like, what? This is just silly. I don't know. Like, like if you really, f if you feel, if you feel strongly about it, then include an Israeli superhero and say something with it. Like, I don't know. Like if you, if you feel that Israel is committing a genocide, then maybe have the Israeli superhero stand against it. Like, I don't know. This just seems kind of cowardly to me. You know what I mean? Like, Like I under again, I understand that this conflict is very 
divisive and people feel very strongly and you know some people literally think that israel is committing a genocide and vice versa right hamas is trying to genocide israel and whatnot but like i just don't think that we should by the way my my dog moved <laughs> he hit my tripod um i just don't think that we should let that get get us to a point where it's like no you can't have an israeli superhero i don't know i just feel like that's weird um, to be fair, I, I did, uh, shit, I should have included this in here, my bad, but I, I thought, you know what, let me, let me look this up real quick. Yeah, sorry, so I'm reading here on, on the rap that she will still be Israeli, she will still be Jewish, she just won't be, like, a Mossad agent. So, I mean, to, to be fair, that, that probably is, like, a good, uh, middle ground, um, I don't know, I, it still does seem a little cowardly to me to change the character, Again, my dog is moving my tripod. <laughs> um, it still does feel a little... Coda, stop. <laughs> He's, like, scratching himself with his back on the tripod. Um, I don't know. It seems a little cowardly to me. Like, I feel like you could have made her a Mossad agent and actually, like, said something with it. Like, I don't know. If you want to fucking go against... If you, if you have an opinion on the war, have an opinion on the war. But at the end of the day, as long as she's still Jewish... You know, and she isn't just like vaguely whatever, some whatever she like change her to a, a a black widow, and make her like a vague ethnic race. I feel like it's fine. You know, I. It is what it is. Well, we'll 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 have to wait and see how it plays out. Um. All right. Next story. We got a set photo from the set of Peacemaker. So, this is very interesting. So if we if we this is the full thing. If you look at the Peacemaker logo and the White Dragon outfit, those are very different from uh, from what they looked like. Or not very different. Well, one of them is. We'll get into it. Uh, but they look different from what they looked like in Season 1. By the way, I have no idea who the guy on the right is. But if this is a, a picture of Peacemaker um, in Season 1, if you look at his logo, it's like tilted uh, in a different way. So if you look at the bird there, And they're they're facing in different directions now. This kind of makes me wonder, like, oh, or is it like a different universe <laughs> situation? By the way, White Dragon he died in Peacemaker season one, and he you know his his outfit was red, so I wonder if this is pointing to a different universe situation. Then again, could just be outfit changes. <laughs> Doesn't necessarily mean that, but. We know that some way, somehow, Peacemaker Season 2 is going to be set within the DCU. Whereas the first season was set in the DCEU. It's still unclear if they're just going to, like, pretend that... Or may, if they're just going to just say, whatever, it's in the DCU now. And it is what it is. We're not giving some kind of big explanation. Or or we don't know if, like, Peacemaker is going to fall, fall through a portal... And end up in another universe. It's unclear, but these set photos do indicate that the outfits are different, which does hint at these being different, like variants of of these characters. But we'll have to wait and see. All right, next up, the Russo brothers. They are, of course, known for directing uh, Captain America: The Winter Soldier, Captain America: Civil War, Captain America: Infinity War, as well as Captain America: Endgame. So they've they're pretty heavy hitter MCU directors. Uh, and it seems like they might be coming back to direct uh, Avengers 5 and Avengers Secret Wars. So this is coming from The Hollywood Reporter. The Russo brothers are in early talks to return to Marvel Studios to direct not just one, but the next two Avengers movies, sources tell The Hollywood Reporter. The hiring ends a months-long high-stakes search by the studio for filmmakers to oversee the fifth and sixth Avengers movies. Multiple names were in contention, including Deadpool and Wolverine director Sean Levy, who was offered the gig. Sources say the talks are in the early stages. The fifth Avengers movie was previously titled Avengers the King Dynasty and was to star Jonathan Majors as the time-traveling villain Kang. But Marvel cut ties with the actor after he was convicted of assault in her and, uh, and harassment in December. The feature is expected to get a new name and a new focus. So, a couple things there. Um... The, the things at the end, basically saying that, I think this was already confirmed, but this is just them 
uh, confirming again that Jonathan Majors is not uh, is not coming back as King, and the Avengers Five is no longer going to be called the King Dynasty. So it is getting a new name and a new focus. So Kang is just straight up not going to be the main villain of the movie anymore. So that's confirmed now. Um, and yeah, it seems like they are possibly going back to the well and getting uh, the Russo brothers to direct these movies. And I, here's the thing. I think at the end of the day, I, I think this is a positive move, right? Like their their MCU track record sp- speaks for itself. And I, I think it's a safe choice to go back to them. Um, it, however, there were reports like a few weeks ago that they actually didn't want to go back to them because while well, yes, they have a very good uh MCU track record. Their track record outside of the MCU is not great. <laughs> you know, they directed a uh, Cherry with Tom Holland, which was apparently not good. I didn't see it. Um they directed some like detective movie with Chadwick Boseman that I didn't see but was apparently not good. I did watch their movie The Gray Man. That was awful. <laughs> so they haven't really had a big hit post the MCU. So, I mean, I could understand why Marvel didn't want to go with them initially. The movies that they direct are also, like, insanely expensive. Like, they have some movie with Netflix coming out later this year that's, like, $400 million. Like, they're not good about keeping, about making movies within a tight budget. So, I could understand why you wouldn't want to go back to the Russo Brothers. That being said, it is safe, right? It's not unreasonable that you know, operating under Kevin Feige and with the guidance of Kevin Feige that they could make another Infinity War and Endgame. It's not unreasonable to think that. So at the end of the day, are there risks here? Yeah, I I would argue there are, but I I think it's a good choice. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. All right, next story. The Halo show is canceled. Uh, I didn't hate the Halo show, to be honest with you. That being said, I'm not a big Halo fan. So when people are like, the Master Chief is supposed to wear a helmet. Or, or sorry, Master Chief is supposed to wear a helmet. Why are you taking a helmet and you're supposed to see Master Chief's face? Why is Master Chief having sex? She's supposed to be a virgin. I've never seen him having sex in the game, so that means he's a virgin. Why are you having him have sex? I didn't really care about any of that. <laughs> I'm just like, hey, it's an alright show that I enjoyed watching. <laughs> you know, I just I don't care about all of your complaints about it being different from the games. This is not something that I cared about. So, I didn't mind the show. That being said, it wasn't amazing. Also, a lot of people that played the games really didn't like it. So, I'm not surprised that it's canceled. Let's get into the article here. It's coming from The Hollywood Reporter. Master Chief has fought his last battle at Paramount+. Plus. The streamer has canceled its video game adaptation, Halo, after two seasons. The series, based on the Xbox franchise and starring Pablo Schreiber as Master Chief John... Uh, 117 finished its second season in March. Sources say the show's producers, Amblin, Xbox, and 343 Industries, will look to land the series at another outlet for a third season. Paramount Plus is said to be supportive of a possible move. We deeply appreciate the millions of fans who propelled the Halo series to be a global success, and we remain committed to broadening the Halo universe in different ways in the future, reads a statement from 343 Industries. We are grateful to Amblin and Paramount for their partnership in bringing our expansive sci-fi universe to viewers around the world. So, it seems like Xbox still wants to <laughs> continue the show. This definitely seems to be a breakup from Paramount Plus's side. Yeah, I can't... Uh, it, it, that The other thing about, about Paramount Plus's side is that they're currently going through like a potential... Or actually, no, it has gone through. They've been bought out by a new company, Skydance Media. Um, so it on and it's probably a very expensive show. I wonder if that has something to do with it. If like the new leaders came in and they were like, "Hey, this is a very expensive show. I don't know that it's worthwhile to do it." Um, so I wonder if some of some of that happened. May, like may, maybe they would have continued Halo if it wasn't for. Skydance, I don't know. That's just a thought to put out there, but it does seem like Xbox still wants to do it. So it's very possible that it gets picked up at like Netflix or Amazon or Apple TV. I feel like Apple TV Plus might actually be a good home for it. Um, Because they're just throwing money at whatever the fuck. (laughs) So we'll see. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. All right, next up. 
We got an update on Paradise Lost. If you don't remember, this is uh, the show that James Gunn described as being like Game of Thrones, but on Themyscira, the island that Wonder Woman comes from. So he posted about it on threads. Uh, Somebody asked him, is Paradise Lost still in production? And he said, nothing is in production unless it's been greenlit. Right now, that's Superman, Supergirl, Penguin, Peacemaker, Lanterns, and a handful of animated projects. But Paradise Lost, like many other titles known and unknown, is still in very active development. It will be in production once we have a script or scripts we think are great and ready to shoot. Never before. As an aside, we aren't officially cast on anything that isn't greenlit. So uh, this is just like one of those things about the DCU that actually does give me faith. Like the fact that (laughs) James Gunn has to like clarify that. Listen, just to be clear, we don't move forward with projects until we have scripts that we're happy with. The fact that that isn't just the standard mentality in Hollywood is fucking insane. It is actually insane that that is something that James Gunn has to like clarify and is like almost a selling point to the DCEU or not to the DCEU, the DCU. That's like saying like, Hey, I'd be a good boyfriend. I don't poop my pants. (laughs) Shouldn't it be a special thing? But considering that all the other eligible bachelors have got poopy pants, suddenly it is. And that's, that's what's crazy. Like the MCU Well, literally, they'll, like, go into production on a movie, and they don't have, like, the third act written. (laughs) And so then they'll, like, they'll, they'll, they'll do a bunch of CGI work and VFX work, and then Kevin Feige will come in and be like, hey, you know all that work you did? Scrap it. We're changing it because of reasons and stuff and things, and... This is just such a wonderful... It's just so nice to to know that this is how James Gunn is running the DCU. You know, who knows if it'll end up turning out good. So could... It still very well could turn out bad. But I'd be lying if this, do, if this doesn't give me, like, some semblance of hope. All right. Um, so, yeah. That is it for all the news stories. Let's get into what I've been watching. So... I watched House of the Dragon. Hold on. What? Give me one moment. <laughs> Sorry. I uh, forgot to preload an image of Rhaenyra's. <laughs> I watched House of the Dragon Season 2, Episode 5. And uh, it was a pretty pretty solid episode. Um, you know, the previous episode was a very action-packed episode. There was a big battle and whatnot. This one is a lot more of people talking in rooms. But that's still pretty engaging. Um, yeah, I, uh, I liked seeing the fallout of the big battle. I liked seeing, uh, Alicent basically get usurped <laughs> by, uh, by Aegon, I think. The eye patch, patches, by patches. I, 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 I forget all these people's names. Um, I like seeing him have his, like, little power grab, right? Very, very obvious that he, he very much intended on killing his brother. You know what I mean? Um... And, uh, but he didn't actually end up killing him, right? He's still alive, barely. Um, I wonder if he'll end up recovering in some way and taking power back. That'll be very interesting. Um, but yeah, so I liked everything that's going on in King's Landing. You know, I like uh, seeing Rhaenyra sort of seeming... I don't know, I, I will say... I actually know. I, I feel like they've done a bit of a poor job with Rhaenyra's character this season. I feel like they've just made her too stupid. Like, the way that she just, like, didn't perform, like, any military action throughout this entire season. Um, and then she's like, has a surprised Pikachu face when her, like, uh, when her advisors are like, you gotta suck, Rhaenyra. Because <laughs> you're a woman. And it's like, okay, I guess they don't need to add the woman part. But it's just weird. Like, 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 like I, I understand that they want to make it, they want to make this point of, like, hey. You know, I've never been trained to do this. Like, I've never been trained to fight wars and whatnot. What? I feel like they could have at least had her perform some kind of military action and fail against uh, Sir Kristen Cole. And that would have been a much more effective way rather than having her not really do anything and then, like, sneak off to try to, like, talk with Allison to see if they can work things out. It's like, nah, bitch. (laughs) <laughs> You're going to war. What are you talking about? Um, 
So I don't know. I don't love what they've done with that, with, with Rhaenyra. So hopefully she does some like sneaky, crafty thing that makes her feel like a badass again uh, in the next few episodes. But yeah, and then I also like what they're doing with Damon as well. He's tripping balls. He's confronting his demons. So we'll, uh, I think all of that is very interesting as well. So overall, I liked episode five. Have a little bit, little, some little, little bit of complaints with the season overall though. Um, I also watched My Adventures with Superman, uh, season two, episode nine. Uh, really awesome stuff, man. I like in this episode we really get to see, um, like Lois and Clark sort of work their shit together, and they're like in Brainiac's mind jail <laughs> and whatnot. And we see, we see Lois basically get to be a badass in this, and it was. It was very cute. I, I really, 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 I, I just really like the show, man. It's so, it's just so nice, and I, I just really enjoy it. Um, it again, I've said this multiple times, but it makes, it makes me feel like I finally get Superman. You know, after most of my Superman knowledge comes from like, you know, the the Snyder and DCEU stuff, or like, honestly, like Smallville or. Uh, Lo- what was it called? Lois and Clark, I think, the show that's on the CW. And I'm not saying that any of that stuff is bad or anything, and I'm not, I'm not even saying that it's not valid, but they're not really Superman. At least they don't really feel like Superman. It's like, you know, Smallville is like a Clark Kent show, and uh, Lois and Clark is like su- Superman when he's old and has kids, and, you know, the, the DCEU Superman was all, like, dark and gritty or whatever. Watching my adventures with Superman and seeing like a story, seeing this story about Superman and Jimmy and Lois makes me feel like I finally understand Superman. <laughs> um, so I just, I mean, I, I really love the show and uh, yeah, highly recommend checking it out if you haven't seen it. Um, I also finished Horizon Forbidden West. This is a game that I finally got around to. Uh, if you don't know what Horizon is, plays Aloy, this little character here. And uh, she she fights like robot dinosaurs <laughs> with a bow and arrow. Um, it's like a futuristic like um, kind of post apocalypse situation where like uh, humanity has reverted to like uh, being in, uh, to like operating like you know like Native Americans and whatnot, um, and where they're all they're in like tribes and stuff like that. And they and the, like the you're clearly in a post-apocalyptic future, right? Because they're robot dinosaurs. You see like remnants of like of like skyscrapers and whatnot, and it's it, it's really cool world building and whatnot. And the gameplay is super fun. It's you know it's very Monster Hunter. Um, it's kind of it's kind of like an easy version of Monster Hunter, I would say. Um, but yeah, I, I had a ton of fun with it. Um, I I think the story is uh, not necessarily the most like gripping drama necessarily, but I was always interested in it, um, pretty much all throughout. Uh, I was, like, a, a, a big part of the Horizon games is figuring out the mystery, right? Is figuring out, like, what happened to humanity. And that stuff always ha- helps see me through to the end. Um, and, yeah, I really like Aloy as well as a character. I know some people don't like Aloy because they think that she's unlikable. And I understand where they're coming from. But, first of all... Uh, I love an autistic queen, you know? She's just like me for real, for real, okay? I don't want to be around people either. But also, I always... Because I, I, I'd always heard this criticism of Horizon Forbidden West. When you play the game, it's pretty obvious that that's part of her arc. Even early on. Like, it seems... like I, It felt, like, pretty obvious to me. It's like, oh, yeah, she's going to build up to, like... um Realizing that she, she doesn't need to do everything by herself and that she needs uh, friends and allies and whatnot it's like yeah like by the end of the game she's a lot more personable and she 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 has like a group of friends that you know that helps her and whatnot it's just like it's like i get the criticism and i understand that like games should be appealing at at the beginning so i mean if you just saw her being kind of an asshole at the beginning of the game and uh, you just called it quits there i get that but just to be clear like, yeah, it's part of her arc that she, she learns to become more personable and not have this, like, not have, not carry the world on her shoulders. But yeah, Horizon Forbidden West. To be clear, I'm talking about the sequel here. Horizon Forbidden West. 
The first game is Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, I recommend it. I also watched Long Legs. This is the uh, new Nicolas Cage uh, horror movie, kind of. Well, I'll be honest. I thought that it was... When I walked into it, I thought it was just going to be like a serial killer movie. It is that. (laughs) It is that. There are also horror elements <laughs> that I, I didn't necessarily realize was going to be in it. I thought it was just a thriller. Um, I I really liked it. So I think there are some things that I could criticize. Like I think near the end, I'm a, I, 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 there is this element of like I'm not entirely sure what happened here, <laughs> and it's like maybe maybe if i watch it again i can pick up more things but i did leave the i did sort of leave the theater going like hmm i wonder what ultimately this movie is trying to say here <laughs> and the other thing about it is that nicholas cage is in it he does play a serial killer and he gives a very interesting performance like at times it's pretty terrifying at other times i do feel like he's doing a little too much you know what I mean? Where it's like, okay, I think you're trying a little too hard to be crazy here, Nicholas. Um, but at the end of the day, it is a very like, like he's he he's he's going for it, <laughs> and I appreciate that. And at times, it's very effective. Um, also, the movie looks beautiful. Like it is shot beautifully. I feel like a lot of horror movies, it just feels so cheap and so lazy. This is like a, this is a, a very well produced film. Um, in terms of the shots and the, you know, and the cinematography, the editing, by the way, very interesting editing. Um, re- re- really appreciate that how how the movie's edited and the the way it uses music is also very cool. So it's a very like I recommend watching the movie. I, I think it's a very interesting watch. Like I again, I have my criticisms of it, but at the end of the day, I I really enjoyed watching it. So recommend watching Long Legs. Uh, I also watched. Did I really not? <laughs> Did I really not add this picture either? Give me one moment. All right, so I also watched The Acolyte, uh, episode eight, the season finale. And overall, I I do end up having a lot of the same complaints that I've been having throughout the entire show. I don't hate it. You know, I if I were to give it a rating, I would give it like a six out of ten. I, I think it's fine. You know, to a lot of people, you say that and... They think that you're you're saying that it's the most amazing thing that you've ever seen in your life. That's not what I'm saying. I think it's overall fine. Like, I don't hate anything that it's, like, trying to do, right? Uh, thematically, theoretically. <laughs> it, could be, it could be good. Um, like, I know there are a lot of people that are like, they're breaking all the lore, but... Now, again, I'm not a lore expert, but I actually don't think that that ended up being true because, like, all of the people that would have seen the Sith like either died no yeah they they all died so i don't think cal mundi him i don't think it con necessarily contradicts what he says in one of the prequel movies where he was like oh the sith haven't been seen in ten thousand years like i think at the end of the day i don't think anything was necessarily contradicted there um what were some of the other like lore things that people were talking about oh i guess they show some guy named darth bane or something and people were like what how can he how can Darth Bane or no whether Darth Plagueis but I don't know who any of these fucking people are but then I heard other people and the people are saying like how can he be here in this time period he's not old enough but then I've but then I've also but and, and hold on so uh, I'm, I'm just trying to get my lore stuff straight because I and I think people also complained about Cal Mundy's age too right by the way I could be mispronouncing all these people's names I'm sorry <laughs> but then I've heard but then I've also seen it pointed out that those characters names penis head guy Cal Mundy and Darth Plagueis or whatever, the guy in the cave. I've also heard it pointed out that those guys' age, ages were only confirmed in Star Wars Legends. If that's the case, then what are you guys talking about? Those aren't canon. It seems like with a lot of that stuff, y'all are just complaining to complain. And then I also don't mind that they're them showing the Jedi in a bit of a morally ambiguous way, right? Like, it's very interesting that, like, I genuinely feel like, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong, but I genuinely feel like the whole point with the prequels was to showcase that the Jedi were incredibly flawed and that 
they ultimately led themselves to their own destruction and their own downfall with like the creation of Darth Vader. Cause they like their shit at dumbass rules and whatnot and their dumbass whatever the fuck they're doing eventually led to Anakin becoming Darth Vader. Am I wrong in that assessment? Like like people got so ass mad over how the Jedi were portrayed in episode three and episode uh, seven. And by the way, I personally don't even think they were being portrayed as being like these evil, whatever the fuck people think they were being portrayed as. I don't even think so. Especially in episode seven. Like at, for me, episode seven was to like clarify, Hey, we're showing this through the perspective of the Jedi. They're not like evil and bad people, but people somehow still thought that the show was trying to portray them as evil. But I'm just, so I'm just saying like that happens. Are you telling me that you see that as them being evil? But you watch, like, The Phantom Menace, and you see Liam Neeson taking Anakin away from his mom, fucking manipulating and gaslighting him, telling him, hey, by the way, you're not supposed to love your mom. You're not supposed to have attachment to your mom. Having attachments are bad. Like, that's abusive in and of itself. And then he leaves fucking Shmi to live a life of slavery? I'm just saying, a lot of you guys that are complaining about the Acolyte, you guys fucking, you guys uh, just have George Lucas's cock just deep in your throat. Like, I can barely understand what you're saying. He did that in the prequels. And you're getting mad at, like, the Acolyte? Come on, stop. <laughs> um, I just, I, I don't know. Like, I do feel like Disney is, a, is in a really weird place right now. Because, by the way, and I'm going to clarify this, Acolyte isn't especially good. This last episode, I, honestly, I feel like the meta conversation around Star Wars is more interesting than the Acolyte itself. But it does feel like Disney is in a really fucking weird place. Because in my eyes, if you're going to faithfully, right, this faith, if you want to be faithful to George Lucas's vision of Star Wars, and you're going to tell stories pre-prequel era, I feel like you have to tell them with with, a, with painting the Jedi in like a gray with a gray area, because their actions had to have led to their downfall. I feel like, am I like am I wrong about that? <laughs> am I wrong about that? So again, I'm not saying that the acolyte is especially good. If you want to criticize it because it has dumb writing, right? Because of you know dumb decisions that characters make and. You know, if you want, if you think the performances were bad, and maybe you thought that it lo it looked cheap, the visual effects were were goofy looking. I all that stuff is great, open season. But I'm just saying that, like, if you feel like this show is like disrespecting the Jedi, I just feel like you guys are where I feel like George Lucas was putting stuff down with the prequel trilogy, and y'all weren't picking it up. But that's just me. Anyways, the episode itself was fine. Um, like, again, well, sorry. The episode itself, it was fine. The, the the ultimate problem with the Acolyte is just that I they didn't make us care enough about the characters. <laughs> like, I didn't care enough about Osha and Soul's relationship. Like, I I don't think they set up, like, the character turn well enough to where, like, Osha is now at the point where she's ready to kill Soul. You know, I, I just, I... I I feel like we should have had more time with these characters and we should have given been given more scenes with their relationships. Like how did we not get a scene of Osha and soul training as a, as when, when she's a Jedi youngling, how did we not get that? That's so weird. So all at the end of the day, it was fine. Good choreography, like good lightsaber fights. I don't think you can deny that really. Um, but they, the character work, man, character is everything. You got to get people invested in your characters or else they're not going to be invested in your show. So, that's it. Uh, next up, I watched Du Bois season four, episode eight, the finale of the season. Um, I thought this was a great finale, to be honest. <laughs> like, I've had a bunch of like my main criticism of the boys thus far, uh, of season four thus far has been that it feels a little bit like a filler season, and I still do think that, like. As good of an episode as this finale was, it feels like a mid-season episode. Like this 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 feels like the episode that comes in the middle of the season and it's like, "Oh shit, bro, here we go." Oh, it's over. 
<laughs> that, that's what it feels like. So the main reason why I'm still like hype on it because it if is because I know that season five is going to be the last season. If I knew, if I didn't know that, and for all I knew, the boys was going to be going was going down the Walking Dead territory, where it's just going to keep going forever and ever. I would feel a lot more negative about it. But at the at the end of the day, I think I'm okay with this being a bit of a filler season. Um, because I do, I at least I hope I hope that season five is going. They're going to bring down. They're they're going to bring the house down, and hopefully, it's gonna it's gonna be amazing. Um, it's going to be as good as the, the previous seasons, but yeah, at the end of the day, just because of, just because it, it felt like a filler season, I, I do ultimately have to say that I think season four is the worst season. That being said, I didn't, it's not, that I didn't enjoy watching it. You know, I, I liked it overall. Um, I would say my biggest complaint and it, it even comes back in this episode is the way that they handle Huey, man. It's just weird. Like he gets sexually assaulted multiple times. And they don't address it in a good, in a uh, like a good way. <laughs> like I, I, I don't know. I guess. And there are people that say that, or that that try to make the argument that the show like hates Huey or something like that. And I don't think that that's necessarily true because even in this episode, Huey is actually like it. It is overall a pretty strong episode for Huey because he ends up becoming the light of the boys again, like the like the the more hopeful and optimistic character. And I really like that about this episode, about this finale, right? Where he's saying like, hey man, we need, we, we've been getting too comfortable with killing and we need to not do that or else we're going to be just like the bad guys. And that, like all of that stuff is great. But man, they did a bad job of not even really addressing the fact that he was sexually assaulted like two times. Especially when you when they handled uh, Starlight really well in the first season. I don't know why they didn't take the opportunity to tackle male sexual assault. I but at the end of the day, I I don't think that there was malicious intent behind it. I this is going to sound cringe, but I honestly think it is just toxic masculinity. I think it's this like I don't think they necessarily thought of it in those terms to be completely honest with you. Um I I I just don't think it I I think it's the toxic masculinity of men not being uh not how do how do i put this i think it is the toxic masculinity mindset of men coping with the with those things with, with sexual assault and stuff like that differently and not needing as much support which again i think is toxic so i don't know i at the at the end of the, at the very least it was a missed opportunity you know to 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 tell an interesting story with huey so that stuff was really weird, um, and I think that's definitely my biggest criticism of the season. But again, overall, I liked it. Um, I like that uh, next season is going to be all-out war. Um, I think that's super cool. Um, I, at the beginning of the season, I wasn't as into the Frenchie and Kamiko whole, like, whatever the fuck they got had going on. But by the end of the season, I was like, you know what? This was fucking... This was really cute. I... I I'm okay with, with the Kamiko and Frenchie <laughs> storyline of this season based on the way it ended up. Um, Butcher, I think he was a standout this season. Everything that they did with uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan I thought was really great. Kind of Batman Arkham Knighting it. <laughs> um, and the promise of next season is also really cool. Uh, A-Train was also a good highlight of the season. You know, I, 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 I like him sort of becoming a bit more pure. Um, so I'm excited to see him next season as well but yeah overall overall i enjoyed the season it just felt like a little bit of a filler season but i think they're gonna come back strong next season and hopefully and end the show strong uh so we'll see next up i also watched cobra kai season six part one uh here's the thing about cobra kai every season i start watching it and i'm like man i feel like they i feel like they might be overstaying their welcome <laughs> But then I get into it, uh, but then I get into the show, and I'm like, you know what? Nah, I'm back in. <laughs> watching this part one of season six, I'm starting watching it, and I'm like, eh, I feel like they might be, I feel like this show might be overstaying its welcome. And I never quite got over that feeling. <laughs> but I still enjoyed it. Like, 
Yes, is it just like, man, these are no longer children. Like, you really get that feeling. It's like, these motherfuckers are paying mortgages at this point. <laughs> but at least they're graduating high school at this point. Um, but it, honestly, though, like, I still enjoy it. It's fine. I. Uh, it's also the last season, which, again, much like The Boys, is like that 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 adds a lot to me enjoying it and getting and and wanting to wanting to push through it but overall i i, I still think it's a, it, it's it, it's it's fun like it, it is um you know 80s movie like foolishness of like having karate fights <laughs> in public with no repercussions and so it's like 80s cheese mixed with genuine emotionality that I think the show balances really well. And I will say near the end of the, near the end of part one, it gets pretty serious. Like there's like a thing that happens in it where I'm like, damn, that's, that's rough. <laughs> they're, they're going there. Um, and yeah, it, it was, it's pretty well handled. Uh, so Netflix is doing a thing where I think they're, they're dividing the sixth season, the, the sixth season up into three parts. I don't know how many episodes it'll ultimately end up being because, the first part is five episodes. I don't know if it's going to ult- ultimately end up being 15 episodes or something crazy like that. But at the end of the day, I actually don't mind this content strategy from Netflix. Like, I think that dropping a whole season at once is just not the way to go. I, I think um, doing uh, doing week by week episodes is the best way to go, at least for me to be able to keep up with shows. <laughs> um so I'm totally fine with with them doing a middle ground and them doing dividing them up into chunks. They did that with straight with the last season of Stranger Things. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll look forward to the next part of season six. Next up, this is the last thing that I watched. I watched Kite Man. Hell yeah! And so Kite Man is a spinoff of Harley Quinn, the uh, the animated show on HBO Max, and I really enjoyed it. So. If you don't know Kite, who Kite Man is, he's basically as lame as he sounds. <laughs> he is a superhero in the DC universe um, who just has a kite. And his whole thing, at least at least this is how he's portrayed in, in the Harley Quinn animated show. Maybe he's a more badass character in comic books. But he's basically a loser who's just like really wants to be a superhero. Um <laughs> but he just he's just a guy with a kite and it's and he he was a really great character on Harley Quinn like they actually ended up giving him a lot more depth in that show and it was and he he, be, he became a fan favorite in fact one might argue that there was a kite man shaped hole once he left so i actually got pretty uh pretty excited when when they announced that they that they were making a kite man spin-off and i'm really enjoying the show basically he uh it's with it's a show about him and his girlfriend um, Golden Glider, and they they like bought a a bar that's basically for, like kind of for super villains where like or not even super villains but like like D list villains attend the bar and they're like um it's kind of their hangout spot and Kite Man due to like shenanigans he ends up buying the bar um and uh and it's kind of like him owning this bar and trying to be a, a like a like trying to be like a, a good super villain because he wants to like prove himself and whatnot. And it's a fun show. Um, I really like him and his, uh, and his girlfriend's relationship. It actually is pretty wholesome. Um, and Kai man is just like a really likable character. Like he's a, he's an idiot. He's a bit of a doof, but he's a lovable idiot. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's super cool. You get a lot of other cameos from Harley Quinn characters. Like Bane is in it. Um, uh, there's like the, the fairy tale lady is in it. I, I really, I really like her and what, and what she, she has a really, actually a, a fairly prominent role <laughs> in, in the first two episodes. Um, I think she's going to end up being a recurring character. Um, and yeah, like it's, it, it's just really fun. I like, you can definitely watch this if you've never seen Harley Quinn. Like it's, it's, it's like you, you can't just jump into this, but if you want to go through the gambit, like you, you would want to start with you know, Harley Quinn, uh, go up to whatever season they're at now. I think they're at four, right? I think they've done four seasons of Harley Quinn and then jump into kite man, but you can just jump into kite man as well. 
Um, although I guess technically, if you if you want to, you could watch the first two season of <laughs> seasons of Harley Quinn and then jump into Kite Man. Or does he leave after the first season of Harley Quinn? I don't know. Do whatever you want. It's your life. I recommend the show at the end of the day. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for this episode of Nerdy Movie News Roundup. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please be sure to uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Do all the things that YouTubers tell you to do at the ends of their videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.